topics that we're going to discuss are the role of technology in delivering the curriculum, factors in technology selection, criteria for the use of visual aids, and stakeholders of curriculum implementation. The topic that I'm going to discuss is all about the role of technology in delivering the curriculum, and the objectives are discuss the roles of technology in curriculum delivery, and identify the factors in technology selection, including the use of visual aids. The role of technology in the curriculum springs from the very vision of the A Philippine Plan. Thus, it is stated, an electronically enabled society where all citizens live in an environment that provides quality education, efficient government services, greater sources of livelihood, and ultimately, a better way of life through enhanced access to appropriate technologies. The objective of the A Philippine Plan perhaps directs the idea of achieving the so-called digital citizenship. It does not mean that individuals must be techies by themselves, but rather by becoming individuals who are able to cope with the necessities of this modern world. This points to the needs for an e-curriculum or a curriculum which delivers learning with the information and communication technology revolution. This framework presupposes that curriculum delivery adopts ICT or information and communication technology as an important role in education. Instructional media may also be referred to as media technology or learning technology or simply technology. The term instructional media has been defined in a variety of ways. In some cases, it refers to all aids that are used by the teacher and students. In other cases, it refers only to the printed media. But let's just focus the broader definition of Romizowski, where instructional media includes not only electronic communication media, but also such devices as slides, photographs, teacher-made diagrams, charts, real objects, and handouts that we use in the process of planned instruction. To generalize, instructional media encompasses all the materials and physical means an instructor must use in implementing and facilitating students' achievement of instructional objectives. It offers various tools of learning and these range from non-projected and projected media from which the teacher can choose depending on what he or she sees fit with the intended instructional setting. So the two types of technology tools are projected and non-projected media. Non-projected medias are those which require no projection, material, or any electric power. These are the real objects, models, field trips, kits, printed materials such as, such as the books and workbooks, visuals, like drawings, photographs, charts, and posters, visual boards like the chalkboard and whiteboard, and lastly are the audio materials. The advantages of using non-projected media are they can be easily acquired or obtained. They can be used without electricity, and these are also appropriate for those with low budget. For example, inside the classroom, the chalkboard and the books Whenever you are going to use them, they are already available. Next is the projected media. Projected media refers to the media formats in which visual and verbal images are projected or enlarged and displayed on the screen by passing strong light through a transparent material. So these are the sound slide sets, slides, multi-image presentation, film strip, opaque materials, computer image projection, and overhead projection. One of the advantages of using projected media is it can present motion materials effectively. So as a result, the learner has the ability to engage all of their senses for a total learning experience. So instructional media is important to make the teaching and learning more effective. This can help in encouraging active participation in the classroom, which also is a very important factor in increasing knowledge retention. Now, let's move on to the factors in technology selection. 
In deciding on which technology to use from a wide range of media available, the factors on which to base selection are practicality, appropriateness in relation to the learners, activity or suitability, and objective matching. First is the practicality. The question here is, is the equipment or already prepared lesson material available? If not, what would be the cost in acquiring the equipment or producing the lesson in audio or visual form? Here, the first thing we must consider is the budget. Consider your funding sources and their availability. A one-time allocation of funds requires the selection of technology with a long lifespan or simply considering the durability of the equipment. It must be durable, low-cost, and non-violent. Factor is the appropriateness in relation to the learners. So is the medium suitable to the learner's ability to comprehend? As we all know, no one learns in the same way because of different learning styles and different abilities. For us to make the teaching and learning more effective, we must see to it that the technology tool we're going to use is based on the interest, skills, and ability of the learners. Another question here is, Will the medium be a source of brain amusement or entertainment, but not learning? We integrate technology into lessons for our students to be more interested in the subject and for the teaching and learning process to be effective and not because to have a source of amusement. For instance, delivering teaching through gamification or taking students on vir virtual field trips. In that way, Technology can encourage more active participation in the learning process. Factor in technology selection is the activity or suitability. Will the chosen media fit the set of instructional events resulting in either information, motivation, or psychomotor display? It is important to consider the activities that we are going to perform inside the classroom for the teacher to ensure that the technology tool suits to the activity. As we all know, the technology tool is not always appropriate for our classrooms or lessons all the time. What facilitates learning for one context or situation does not necessarily do so for all. Factor is objective matching. Overall, does the medium help in achieving the learning objectives? This is the most important factor that the teacher must consider on deciding what media or technology to use to achieve the set of learning objectives. We have to make sure that the technology tool must be parallel to the learning objectives for us to attain our goals. For example, if our objective is to form a clear idea of something, we will use real objects or models. If we want to encourage emotional response, we need films, photos, or poems. Another is if we want to give visual access to something which may not be accessible, we will use pictures, poster, or film. Now let us discuss if what is really the role of technology in curriculum delivery. It can easily be observed that technological innovation in the multifarious fields of commerce, science, and education is fast developing such that it is difficult to foresee the technological revolution in the millennium, inclusive of education changes. However, technological changes in education will make its impact on the delivery of more effective, efficient, and humanizing teaching and learning. In present time, there is actually a need to embrace the era of technological advancement. Thus, these sets of technology will definitely give rise to different fields of endeavor. In this regard, society should build helpful tools when it comes to establishing progress and this will be done through engaging citizens through a productive way of utilizing digital media and devices. Furthermore, those important life aspects will be given high value by simply maximizing the use of significant technological devices, people will be able to gain quality living. 
This will lead to a maximum welfare, hence, attaining successful education, government, services, and livelihood incorporates the pivotal role of technology. Presently, we can identify three current trends that could carry on to the nature of education in the future. Okay, so the first trend is the paradigm shift from teacher-centered to student-centered approach to learning. Okay, before, the teacher serves as the knowledge dispenser, but on today's curriculum, the teacher only serves as the facilitator of the learning. Another trend is the broadening realization that education is not simply a delivery of facts and information, but an educative process of cultivating the cognitive, affective, psychomotor, and much more the contemplative intelligence of the learners of a new age. By using technology inside the classroom, both teachers and learners can develop essential skills for the 21st century. Students can gain the skills they will need to be successful in the future. The third and possibly the more explosive trend is the increase in the use of new information and communication technology or the ICT. As far as we know, technology is here to stay and develop. There are more revolutions that are expected in the industry, so we need to be ready for every new update. The idea that education is for everyone seems to be verified with technology's involvement. So those are the current trends that we are already anticipating to happen in the future. For now, let us first focus on the primary goals of technology in curriculum delivery. First is upgrading the quality of the teaching and learning in schools. Technology is transforming education in a manner that dynamically involves students by replacing a teacher-centered model with student-centered one. So technology helps improve education for students, parents, and teachers. It introduces lots of great tools to help students learn more efficiently. Another role of technology is it increased the capability of the teacher to effectively inculcate learning and for students to gain mastery of lessons and courses. Teachers and learners enjoy technology because it offers plenty of tools to enhance classroom learning. Teachers can find materials that they can easily present to students or sites that can help students practice new material. This there is an unlimited number of teacher resources available to supplement instruction that will help students learn more and better. Another role of technology in curriculum delivery is broadening the delivery of education outside schools through non-traditional approaches to formal and informal learning, such as open universities and lifelong learning for adult learners. Technology transformed teaching by ushering in a new model of connected teaching. Online learning opportunities and the use of open educational resources and other technologies can increase educational productivity by accelerating the rate of learning, reducing costs associated with instructional materials or program delivery, and better utilizing teacher time. Because of technology, Parents may enroll in distance education so that their learning is continuous and for their lifelong learning. The last role of technology in delivering curriculum is revolutionizing the use of technology to boost educational paradigm shifts that give importance to student-centered and holistic learning. The role aimed at improving those educational devices which will take part in sustaining quality learning and learner-centered environment. Education must be technology-driven. It emphasizes the idea of being an activity-focused learning which will be enhanced with the aid of technology. As a result, the learner will be developed holistically. 
The primary roles are based on the framework of the technology driven teaching and learning called TIPAC, where TIPAC stands for Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge. It is a framework to understand and describe the kinds of knowledge needed by a teacher for effective pedagogical practice in a technology enhanced learning environment. The pack shows that there is a direct interconnectedness of the three components, thus in teaching learning process, a teacher should always ask and find the correct answer to the following question for every lesson. First question is, what shall I teach? which is under the content knowledge. How shall I teach the content? Under the pedagogical knowledge. And what technology will I use in how to teach the content? Where is? It is under the technological knowledge. Technology knowledge, or the TK, refers to an understanding of the way that technologies are used in a specific content domain. Next is the content knowledge, or the CK. It includes knowledge of concepts, theories, conceptual frameworks, as well as knowledge about accepted ways of developing knowledge. Next is the pedagogical knowledge. It includes knowledge about how students learn, such as the teaching approaches, methods of assessment, and knowledge of different theories about learning. Next is the PCK or the pedagogical content knowledge. It is knowledge about how to combine pedagogy and content effectively. This is about how to make a subject understandable to learners. That's the end of my presentation. This is Mario Villanueva Mindoro. Thank you and God bless. Good day, educators. I hope that all of us are doing well. For today, I am going to discuss about criteria for the use of visual aids and the stakeholders in curriculum implementation. First, I will discuss the criteria for the use of visual aids followed by the stakeholders in curriculum implementation. Our objectives, define visual aids and discuss the criteria for the use of visual aids. What is visual aids? Visual aids are items of visual manners such as graphs, photographs, video clips, etc. used in addition to spoken information. First criteria for the use of visual aids. Lettering style or font. Consistency and harmony. We must keep the style consistent such as the same font, colors, positions, and font size. Number two, number of lettering style, no more than two static display. Number three, use of capitals. Short titles or headlines should be no more than six words. We must limit our titles or headlines to six words or less. Number four, lettering colors. It must be easy to see and read. Use of contrast is good for emphasis. If we are going to use white background, we need to use dark color for the text. And if we are going to use dark background, we can use light colors for the text. Number five, lettering size. Good visibility even for students at the back of the classroom. Our audience naturally will want to see and to know what we are going to present. The use of visual aids provides emphasis and effectively highlight keywords, ideas, or relationship for the audience. So we need to make sure that our visuals can be seen by our students at the back of the classroom for them to cooperate and to follow the discussions. Number six, spacing between letters, equal and even spacing. Number seven, spacing between lines, not too close or too blur at a distance. Number eight, number of lines, no more than eight lines of text in each slide. 
Number nine, appeal. Unusually catchy, two-dimensional, interactive. We can use overlays or movable flaps. And last, use of directionals, devices like arrows, bold letters, bullets, and contrasting color and size. So we have 10 criteria for the use of visual aids. Next, stakeholders in curriculum implementation. Our first objectives, define stakeholders and discuss the role of each stakeholders in curriculum. What is a stakeholder? An stakeholder is an individuals or institutions that are interested in the curriculum. For example, students, teachers, principals, staff. Number one, curriculum stakeholders. Learners. The rule of the learners are the core of the curriculum. Everything in curriculum should revolve around the learners' interests, needs, abilities, and capabilities. Learners are the reason why curriculum is developed. They are the ones directly influence the curriculum. Learners are the very, very reason why the school exists. Learners in all level make or unmake the curriculum with their active and direct involvement. After all, in curriculum implementation, the concluding question will always be, has the learner learned? Number two, teachers. The role of teachers, curriculum developers and implement implementers. Teacher is curriculum maker. Most curricula start to gain life from the time it is conceived and written. Planning and writing the curriculum are the primary rule of the teachers. He or she writes a curriculum daily through a lesson plan or a weekly plan. Teacher designs, enriches, and modifies the curriculum to suit the learner's needs. Some of the rules of teachers in curriculum implementation. Number one, guiding, facilitating, and directing the activities of the learners. We guide and facilitate our students in every activities to make sure that they are following instructions and to avoid unnecessary activities. Number two, choosing the activities and the methods to be utilized. Teacher chooses the right activities for each topic and also the appropriate method and strategies for teaching to be used. Number three, choosing the materials that are necessary for the activity. We must use materials necessary for the activity to prosper. Number four, evaluating the whole implementation process. Teacher also evaluate the implementation process of the curriculum. A teacher's rule in curriculum evaluation affects the school choice of textbooks as well as the adoption of special programs to augment educational standards. Classroom instructors examine the curriculum's objectives to determine the relevance of the materials. Number five, making a decision whether to continue, modify, or terminate the curriculum. Teachers are the one to decide whether the curriculum is effective or not. If not, they can modify or terminate the curriculum. The next stakeholders of the curriculum, school leaders. They serve as curriculum manager and administrators. In school organization, there is always a curriculum manager and school administrator. In fact, for school principals, one of their function is being a school manager. The question is, why are school administrators and curriculum managers important in curriculum implementations? They are important because they supervise curriculum implementations. They select and recruit new teachers. They admit students. 
procure equipments and materials needed for effective learning. They also plan for the improvement of school facilities and physical plans. The rule of administrators can never be ignored. The final decision making in terms of school purpose rests on the shoulder of school administrators. The next stakeholder of curriculum will be reported by Ma'am Julimar Atano. I am your presenter, Ma'am Florabel Muros. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Hey everyone, before we proceed to my report, please let me introduce myself first. I am Julie Marietano and I'll be the last reporter for this group. Now, let's recall what is curriculum and what is stakeholders. Curriculum is the courses of thought or being implemented by the school, while stakeholders, they are the one who invested in the welfare and the success of a school. In short, curriculum stakeholders, they are the one who improves the school curriculum and the one who implement the school curriculum to be more better curriculum. Now let's begin to our first discussion, the four curriculum stakeholders, the parents. The parents is important to the curriculum stakeholders because parents should provide resources for their children, what their needs, and also develop good relationship with the principals and teachers and keep school well informed about homework to help their children into their homework and also curriculum problems and job development and the behavior of their children to the school to discipline to discipline their children and we have here some observations how parents help the school curriculum the first observation is about the how the more parents supported to their children, the more the students will be motivated to learn. And the second observation is about parents help their children to practice what they have learned from the school and to enhance and develop what they have learned. And the third observation is about in to expand the school learning community encouraged by school-based management which is the student and quality focus to provide schools with enhanced flexibility and autonomy in man managing their own operation and resources according to the needs of their students. Now, let's proceed to our fifth curriculum stakeholders, which is the community as the curriculum resources and a learning environment. It means the community is the extended school ground a learning environment because we just don't learn from the school, we learn from our environment or what we see inside the community. Let's proceed to the last but not the least curriculum stakeholders which is the other stakeholders in curriculum implementation and development. We have agencies and organizations that are involved in the planning, design, implementation and evaluation of the school curriculum and that is the government and the non-government agencies. Let's tackle first the government agencies. We have here the DepEd, Test.Ched, PRC, CSC, and the LGU. DepEd, Test.Ched is the trifocalized agencies that implement the school curriculum. While the PRC and the CSC are the agencies certified and issues teachers license to be qualified in teach. The last one is the LGU who provides school supplies and books and who paid for the teachers' teachers in the barangays. And for the non-government agencies, we have the Gawad Kalina Synergy Metrobank Foundation. In Gawad Kalina, it teaches the students who can't attend into formal education. While in Synergy, it only teaches the most important content where you can use in your daily life. And for the Metrobank Foundation, it gives financial support into the school. Here are some non-government agencies. The professional organizations like Philippine Associations for Teacher Education are property. State universities and colleges, teacher educators, associations are SACTI. National organizations of science, teachers and educators are NOSTI. Mathematics teachers, associations of the Philippines are EMTA. And now we have learned that not all stakeholders are inside the school. 
and that stayed with our presentation. Thank you and again, good day to all. Yeah.